Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Financial News. I'm Ron Jankowski with Channel 4 and Payless Heights. And, of course, we have Paul Municle from Ameriprise Financial. Good morning, Paul. Thanks, Ron. Thanks for having me back. Um, why don't we start the show out like we did last week, where you can give us some approximate updates on how some of the major indices are performing um, year to date. And I know you've prepared some follow-up questions for me. And I've prepared answers for those questions. So, Good. Uh, and start. I have question one question that a viewer sent in, and uh, we will attack that when it comes up to that time. Sounds good. All right, I want to give the indices, and as Paul had mentioned, these are all approximate numbers. There are fractions larger than the numbers I'm going to give you. Dow is up 14%. Uh, now, these numbers are year to date year to date and i want to make sure that that it's understood it's not for the week it is year to date again for that was up 14 percent and some fractions so those are all approximate numbers s p 500 is a plus 16 percent and nasdaq is up 20 percent uh, it, it's pretty interesting to see all that has been going on uh, the other things i want to mention is um, china shanghai composite is up 28.9%. Wow, that's it a is big return here today. Huge, huge. Another one is uh, the, Ni the NYMEX uh, net gas. That one is down 14%. So something it's really happened. over, yeah. Be yeah, careful of that exactly. Sector. Now, what's really interesting, the technology, and of course that's keeping everything up, I'm sure, and that's up um, approximately 26% year to date. It's a big number for that sector. It is, but it, doesn't technology today probably carry more of the impact on the Dow or not? It's like any other sector. The things flow cyclic cyclically and depend how earnings come in. It could be a technology sector this week that does well. It could be the financial staples sector a month from now that does well. The, everything ebbs and flows. Okay. Now, I had a phone call from a viewer and it says, the market rally continues and continues. Paul, how long is this going to go on for? And it is pretty strong. We'll see. So in our, in our, I took some notes here. In our view, the economic slowdown seen at the beginning of the year is likely a temporary speed bump, at least for the United States. The current earnings season that we're in right now could play a critical role in shaping the growth outlook over the next coming months. We believe a U.S.-China trade deal, improving economic fundamentals, and better than expected profits for 2019 are the key ingredients for lifting risk assets, stocks mainly, higher. If the growth slowdown seen in the first quarter does prove temporary, we believe risk assets have an opportunity to rise further in the second quarter, meaning we think the market can continue this rally potentially. Nevertheless, though, investors should maintain portfolios close to strategic targets and be comfortable with their investments should another sell-off rear its ugly head. With that said, the S&P 500's uptrend remains unbroken. Breath across the U.S. stock market is currently solid. Cyclical sectors are leading the charge, and the flood of earnings reports over the coming weeks, which we're in right now, could indicate analysts and companies were too aggressive in taking down first quarter profit forecasts earlier in the year. There are solid cases to be made by both the bulls and the bears um, about where the market is headed next. The current e economy, or I'm sorry, the current environment, though, argues for a well-diversified investment investment approach. Okay, uh, and I want to mention to the viewers that we're talking as of April 22nd, 2019. That's very important because you're saying a lot of things, and where is this at in as far as time is concerned? One um, additional question I have: What about oil, Paul? Where is this all going? It's up and down, and affects our our fuel pump, our gas pumps. Can you tell us a little bit more? Absolutely. And, and rally oil has rallied a lot already this year. And most people are aware of that boom in energy production that's been going on here in the U.S. over the last decade or so. What many may not realize, however, is just how much output has surged just recently. 
Remarkably, U.S. crude oil production jumped 17% in 2018 alone. For the full year, the U.S. average record production of 10.96 million barrels a day, according to the U.S. Energy Information Administration, the EIA. And as noted, this was the average for the full year. U.S. crude oil production ended 2018 with a December average of 11.96 million barrels a day. The previous all-time high was received or was achieved for a very short period in 1970 amid new oil production out of Alaskan oil fields. Investors should consider this development and various implications that come along with it. The energy sector has become a larger percentage of overall economic activity here in the U.S. Thus, fluctuating commodity prices have been having a greater influence on things such as new orders for durable goods, business equipment spending, employment, and GDP. Not to mention the growth of favorable influence on the trade balance. Commodity price swings have also had a much more pronounced impact on aggregate corporate earnings results over the last decade, much as they are expected to do here, do so here um, for this reporting season in Q1 of 2019. Uh, I want to mention one thing, Paul, out of a major factor when you start talking about oil and the prices, etc. Uh, security of transportation impacts that. Oh, there's there a lot of factors. It's yes. more than just the price of oil that affect the Ex pump. It's, exactly. It's, transportation is a big deal that goes along with yeah, it. Yeah, if, there, if there's an uprise with the government or, or with some uh, issues in the Middle East and it's on near the water, near the shoreline, uh, it, it immediately slows down everything and the prices. Yep. There's a lot start. of factors that affect the pump price. It's more than just the price of crude. Right. I just wanted to share that. It's an important thing that you just mentioned. So many factors are involved with it. Okay, well, uh, Paul, uh, we're going to be looking forward to going to our next show, uh, in, which is Your Money. Stay with us. We'll be right back with that show. And Paul will be talking about very specific things that you might want to be aware of and consider. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Thank you for staying with us. We're back with a new show called Your Money, and I'm going to let Paul take it. What are we talking about, Paul? So today we're going to talk about how to deal with volatile markets as you approach retirement. Okay, well, retirement is an important milestone that it often comes after years or decades of careful planning. For those who have saved diligently and are nearing the end of their careers, the mere thought of market volatility can send shivers down your spine and lose sleep with a sudden drop in the value of their portfolios and impact to their retirement. Will they really have enough money to live off the rest of their life? And that's a concern. And should they put their retirement plans on so they can maintain steady paycheck? Yeah, I mean, those are all great questions, Ron, and as a great intro to, to lead me into, and I've got some answers to those, and Let's hopefully roll it makes them. sense to you and the viewers at home. Good. So if you're in these situations that Ron mentioned, now is a good time to assess whether you have the right plan in place to help you transition confidently into retirement, no matter what happens in the broader market. So today, we're going to give you some tips to keep in mind. One, pick your retirement date. If you haven't already, take time now to decide the year and the month when you and potentially your spouse or partner want to retire. You may find it closer than you think, maybe even just a few years away. Or you may decide that you want to extend your time in the workforce. Whether it's continuing your current career or moving to a new full or part-time role. Either way, you can, your answer can have a big impact on your investment decisions from this point forward. Two, you want to ensure your investments are diversified. Various parts of the market react to headlines and economic drivers differently. 
So for those nearing retirement, the recent spike in volatility is a reminder of how having a broadly diversified portfolio can help reduce your investment risk. The goal of diversification is that if some of your investments lose value, those losses could be offset by gains with other investments. Now, how do you know if you're properly diversified? The simplest answer to that is to check is to check to see that your portfolio maintains a mix of stocks, bonds, mutual funds, short-term cash investments, savings and other investing vehicles, all that take into account your goals and comfort level with risk. Going a step further, ensure you understand how each asset or investment in your portfolio is helping you reach your financial goals. If you're unsure or want a second opinion, consider consulting a financial advisor for guidance. The third and final point I want to go over is balance your need for protection with growth. Protecting your portfolio from current or future market downturns becomes more important as you approach the day when you start living off your savings. Consider investing the money you plan to use for income in the first few years of retirement, more conservatively in liquid vehicles that are easy to access. This can help give you peace of mind that you are prepared to handle upcoming expenses should the market swing. It's also important to remember that your retirement could last 20, 30, or even 40 years. So balance your need for protection with continuing to grow your nest egg. Assets you won't need for some time could be more aggressively positioned. At a minimum, ensure your assets can keep on pace with rising inflation. When the market moves, it's an opportunity to compare your investment strategy to your goals. Are you on track? No matter what the answer is, there are steps you can take to feel more confident about your ability to retire and when and how you want to. As always, for additional help, you know, feel free to reach out to your own um, financial advisor who you trust and have screened and make sure that advisor is willing to discuss with you your potential um, your personal circumstances and provide guidance on how to manage your money for today's market and changing environment. Paul, when, when you talk to your financial advisor, sometimes you might feel the advisor is putting you into an instrument during diversification that may not be moving very, very well. It's somewhat static and you need that if the market changes on your other investments that are more risky. Yep, a well-diversified por portfolio is gonna have money spread out all over the place. And just like how you reported in the first half of the show, Shanghai, for example, is doing very good. Natural gas is doing very bad. Doesn't mean that natural gas is a bad investment. It just means as that part of the portfolio, it's going down now, but you've got something to offset it. So you wanna spread your money out across several different sectors and investments. Good advice, please take that to your financial advisor and discuss that. Well, Paul, thank you for being with us. Uh, that'll be the closing of the show for today and we'll see you next week. And uh, we'll be back with some more interesting financial news. And I just wanted to provide to any of the viewers out there that have a question or have concerns or are not comfortable with their advisor, feel free to give me a call directly. Um, I am located in Orland Park at Ameriprise Financial. And my direct phone number is 708-226-3412. And for Paul Municle with Ameriprise Financial, myself, Ron Jankowski with Channel 4 and Palos Heights, we wish you good investment day.